and happy Palm Sunday, Passion Sunday. I have more announcements to say today than I've had in, a, in three months combined, so it's a good thing you're sitting down, okay? Um, a couple of, first of all, I want to welcome those who are back from Texas, Eleanor, I mean Evelyn, and we have a guest from Kenya who is a, um, a student at CT, not CTS, ESR, okay, and his name is Stanley, so we will greet him after the service. Um, so we're delighted that you're back safely and that you're here safely. Um, there are some bulletin announcements that need to be made. When the service was prepared for today, the blessing of the palms was left out. So Jack and I will do that uh, as soon as we start the service. And then we'll go right into the service after that, uh, after the hymn. Uh, so we'll kind of guide you along uh, as we do it so you know what's going on. The other thing is if you open your hymnal, or, I'm sorry, if you open your bulletin to the first, to page three, you will notice there's this neat little thing taped over the cross or pasted over something underneath. The something underneath was the wrong hymn. So instead of the hymn that's on page four, we will sing hymn 108, uh, all, lo all Glory, Laud, and Honor. So if you want to find that kind of quickly and have that ready, that would be great. Um, today is Palm and Passion Sunday, and we welcome Jack to the pulpit. Last night I was walking around the house going, oh, it's 8.30 and I don't have to start getting my sermon ready. What am I going to do? It was a really crazy evening for me. Um, so, but Jack, we're glad that you're back, and we're expecting all kinds of improvement from the last time we heard you. We know it's going to be there. Um, the other comment, the other thing about today, besides Jack, is that there's a congregational meeting immediately after church. We will pro, uh, we will go to the the parlor for that, and. Um, we will be dismissed from the parlor after the meeting. The recital this afternoon is at 4 o'clock. It is being uh, given to us as a gift of one of, the, one of the people who's been working hard to be able to take the organ. And we don't know yet who, when that's going to happen, when we will get a final uh, say on that. But we have a couple of uh, congregations or people very interested in it. So this afternoon, at four o'clock, be here, uh, and then after the after the recital, if you want to talk to the organist, uh, he'll be he'll stick around to to chat. Dinner reservations should be men, should be in. If they are not for next, if they not been made for next Sunday, like this is your last ditch effort to make it. Okay. Um, if you've not made them, please make them. The dinner is in Hagerstown at Willie and Reds. And um, the, uh, um, you've been given information on that ahead of time. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh, the last thing that I have is that um, Mary Lou Hartman turns 100 on the 27th of April. And she's up north. Um, can't remember the name of the place. Help me out, somebody. We're on a lake, right. And so um, there's going to be a big party bash for her. What we're asking is that you send cards to her so she gets them before that date. Right? Oh, her birthday is actually May 2nd. The party's the 27th. I can't hear you from here. Yeah, the card should arrive by 927. Okay, uh, there's a note in the bulletin about getting DVDs from the organ concert that we had here uh, by our previous organist. Please, um, if you're interested in getting a DVD of that um, or a CD, whatever it is, it's there, they're $5. Let Jack know, Jack's in charge of that. I'm sorry, let Jim know, Jim is in charge of that. Jack made him for us. Okay, any other announcements today? 
If not, then please rise, and Jack and I will follow, carry you through the um, blessing of the palms, and then what? Oh, we've got a prelude. You can sit back down. <laughs> that was just that was just practice, okay? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God, in our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who sake, uh, scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you bless these branches and those who bear them and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King and follow him with perfect continence through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will wave them while we sing our hymn. Go ahead, Gay. All glory, Lord, and honor.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, God in your endless love, love for, for the human race, race you, you sent our Lord Jesus to take to take on, on our nature and, and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Jack. Good morning. Our first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 1, or 4 through 9. This text, the third of the four servant songs in Isaiah, speaks of the servant's obedience in the midst of persecution. Though the servant has been variously understood as the prophet himself, or a remnant of faithful Israel, Christians have often recognized the figure of Christ in these poems. The reading. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, awakens my ear. To listen as those who are taught, the Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsively Psalm 31. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow, and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery, and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror all around. As they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. <clears throat> the second reading is from Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Paul quotes from an early Christian hymn that describes Jesus' humble obedience and his incarnation as a human being, even to death, and his exaltation and glory as Lord of all. The reading. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
to the glory of God the Father, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now before you jump up, I'd like the children to come up for a children's message. Come here. Gonna come up? We are such creatures of habit that by now I thought you'd be on your feet already. You wanna sit in front of me so I can talk to you? Thank you. I don't know your name, so will you give them to me? Evelyn? David. That's David. That's David. And what? Claire. Evelyn, Claire, and David. Okay, do you know why you got these when you came into church this morning? Because it's Palm Sunday. Do you know what happened on Palm Sunday? Oh, she should be here giving the children's sermon. She knows everything already. Yes, that's right. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, and that was the last really happy thing that happened, right? They were just so happy to see him that when he came, they waved their palms, and mine broke, so I had to use jacks. They waved their palms, and they laid them on the ground so that the donkey could cross, walk across them. And that was a way of saying, you are so great. We want you to know that we love you. That was what they were saying. We love you and we honor you and we think you're wonderful. But something happened by the end of that week. What was that? Uh, I'll give you a word. Good Friday. By the end of that week, Jesus was hanging on the cross. And all those people that were yet yelling, oh, we just love you, we think you're so wonderful. All those people were saying, crucify him, crucify him. And so sometimes we are kind of like that. We say one thing and we do something different. So while they were saying that they were so happy that Jesus was there, when the crowd started to say crucify him, they joined in and said crucify him, put him up on that cross, hang him, hang him so he dies. That's what they were saying. But what they didn't know is that God was really in charge of what was going on and that God would raise Jesus from the dead on Easter Sunday. So we celebrate Palm Sunday and then we talk about Good Friday because uh, that's what happened that week. From happy to you get rid of him. We don't want him. Crucify him. And sometimes we do things that hurt Jesus a lot in our everyday lives, still yet. But what I want you to know is that when you do, Jesus forgives you. No matter what it is, Jesus forgives you. And he gives you another chance. Isn't that awesome? Would you pray with me? Thank you, Jesus, for reminding us that sometimes our lips are in the right place with words, but our hearts don't always match our lips. We thank you that you forgive us for those times that we hurt you. And we celebrate and rejoice that you have been raised from the dead so that we know when you forgive us, our sins really are forgiven. Amen. Thank you for joining me. When is Jesus going to come down? Well, not today. We just, oh, when's he going to come down? Well, he's not, he's actually here already in a sense. When we do communion, that's Jesus up on the altar in the bread and wine. And I know that's hard to understand as a little kid, but he's really not going to come down on a donkey today. We just remember that that's what happened a long time ago. Okay? Sit down. Is gracious and The Gospel according to Luke, beginning at the nineteenth chapter. 
After he had said this, Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethage, Bethage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who went, who were, went, sent, departed, and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Now you can have a seat because there's a little bit more to this story. And we pick up in the 22nd chapter of Luke. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of heaven of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one who, whom he has betrayed. Then he began to ask one another, they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to who, as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lorded over them and those in authority over them are also called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on to you, just as my Father has conferred on to me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. 
And he said to them, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. And he also said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, no, not a thing. He said to them, but now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag, and the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a problem with Palm Sunday. In years past, uh, the congregation or the children, after the reading of the first part of today's gospel lesson, would parade around the church, waving their palms, shouting, Hosanna in the highest! Blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Quite a spectacle. And today is Palm Sunday, the day on which Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a young donkey. This day has been described by Christians for generations as the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But have you ever asked yourself if this was a triumphal entry, then why did they crucify Jesus at the end of the week? Unknowingly, the crowd is enthusiastically participating, I think, in a funeral procession, kind of like New Orleans style. Even the Revised Common Lectionary, which we use, also sees this Sunday as a problem. And it's a problem for us because they give us two readings from the Gospels. One reading is from this passage, and it's called the, the Palms reading, the first one that I read. Because of the palm branches that those who would greet Jesus line his way uh, in, into the city. In our reading today, people instead spread their cloaks before Jesus' path. And we don't call today Cloak Sunday. The other reading is from the Passion reading. Because the suffering of Christ at the end of the week is called the Passion of Christ. I chose to end that reading prior to those passages which deal with Good Friday through the resurrection. We will deal with those more fully later this week. So we have a problem today that we need to address. If this is such a glorious Sunday for all Christians, what goes wrong by Friday that Jesus will find himself betrayed by one of his own disciples, arrested by the high priest's guard, accused by a coalition of religious leaders, and tried by the Roman governor? and sentenced to die the death of a common criminal, death by crucifixion. Is it possible that Jesus' procession into Jerusalem was not the only procession that city saw that day? Traditionally, Pilate paraded into Jerusalem on the first day of the Passover week. He entered the west gate, the front gate, with legions of chariots, horses, foot soldiers, dressed for battle and armed with swords and spears. Rome's authority would not be questioned. The majesty in which Pilate enters the front door of the city was meant to inspire awe 
and fear, respect and obedience. Imagine the spectacle of that entry. From the western side of the city, the opposite side from which Jesus would enter, our, uh, Pilate leads Roman soldiers on horseback and on foot. Each soldier clad with leather armor, polished to a high gloss, each centurion head, hammered helmets gleaming in the bright sunlight. At their sides, sheathed in their scabbards, were swords crafted from the heart of steel, and in their hands, each centurion carried a spear. Or if he was an archer, a bow with a sling of arrows across his back. Drummers beat out a cadence in the march, for this was no ordinary entry into Jerusalem. Pilate was governor of the region, which included not only Judea, but Samaria and Eden. And it was a standard practice for the Roman governor of a foreign territory to be in its capital for religious celebrations. It was the beginning of Passover a strange Jewish festival that the Romans allowed. However, the Romans must have been aware that this festival celebrated the deliberation of Jews from another empire, the empire of Egypt. So Pilate had to be in Jerusalem. Since the Romans had occupied this land by defeating the Jews and deposing their king about 80 years earlier, uprisings were always in the air. The last major uprising, long before Pilate's time, had been after the death of Herod the Great in 4 BC. That uprising started about five miles from Jesus' boyhood home of Nazareth. Before it was over, that city and the capital of Galilee and the town of Emmaus had been destroyed by the Roman army. After putting down the rebellion there, the Romans marched on Jerusalem. And after pacifying that city, they crucified over 2,000 Jews who were accused of being part of the rebellion. The Romans had made their intolerance for rebellion well known. And so on this occasion, the Passover, Pilate had traveled with a contingent of Rome's finest from his preferred headquarters in Caesarea by the sea to the stuffy, crowded, provincial capital of the Jews, Jerusalem. Entering from the opposite side of the city is Jesus, fulfilling an Old Testament prophecy. Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. These are the words prophesied by Zechariah, the prophet who, uh, Zechariah, the prophet who prophesied, uh, proclaims the coming of the Messiah. This scripture would not be lost on the Jewish religious leaders. Now what is going on in the minds of those honoring Jesus? Those along the road? If we go with spreading palms, well, which only a king would be greeted this way. In, in uh, Second Kings it's, it's stated, when hurriedly they all took their cloaks and sped them for him on the bare steps, and they blew the trumpet and proclaimed, Jehu is king. And the people wanted Jesus to be their king. But the people did not understand what kind of king Jesus would be. They expected their Messiah to be a great political and military leader who would free them from the tyranny of the Roman Empire. But the kingdom of God is not of this world. It is a spiritual kingdom, 
for the people who put their faith and trust in God. So like many other times in Jesus' ministry, the tables are turned and what is first expected by the disciples and the crowd is changed into something entirely different. The priests and the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, are alarmed. They do as the Roman, they do, and, and the Roman authorities also seek to keep the peace in the normal operation of the temple. You know, the high priest was even appointed by the Roman prefect. So entangled were the religious leaders and the Roman rulers. For the disciples, the euphoria of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem must have been a dream come true. Jesus, however, keeps turning the tables on those who want an uprising against the Romans. He also warns the apostles of his impending death, even during the meal that we celebrate as the last or the Lord's Supper. Today, today's Holy Communion, where we will today share in the meal of Christ's body and blood. And Jesus speaks of the betrayal of one around the table and the apostles speculate who that might be. In true human fashion, they then argue among themselves who is the greatest. Jesus turns the tables again on the apostles by declaring them all to be servant leaders and in so doing, inheritors of a kingdom, the heavenly kingdom. You know, Jesus sees us as we are, human. The apostles argue over who's the greatest in their humanness. Simon Peter, in his humanness, will deny Christ three times. Judas will betray Jesus in his humanness. The priests in the Sanhedrin will protect the status quo in their humanness. The crowd will select Bar uh, Barabbas, who in Luke was part of an insurrection against the Romans over, over Jesus, who is not a warrior in their humanness. Humanness plays a part for us today. But fortunately, there is grace and the forgiveness of our humanness. We can do nothing to deserve this. Only by the grace of God, the sacrificial act of Jesus Christ, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit can over and overcome our humanness. The problem with Palm Sunday is what we celebrate. We don't celebrate an earthly king we celebrate Jesus, who is both fully human and fully divine. In his humanness, Jesus leads us to the cross. As we take up our own cross, we become inheritors of the kingdom of God.
Let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, and one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in God's Passover from death to new life, we pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God most holy and humble, plant in your church Christ's spirit of humility. Remove any barriers preventing us from seeing his saving work on the cross. Hear us, O God. You reveal your will for all creation through stones, seas, mountains, and meadows in the splendor of what you have made. Show us your care for everything, both great and small. Hear us, O God. Rescue those who suffer torture and free those held captive by others. Bring to light the hidden systems that per, uh, perpetuate injustice among your people. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy is great. great. Pour courage and hope into people who feel like they are wasting away in distress and grief. Restore their trust in you, even as you meet their every need. Remember all those among us struggling with difficult problems those we name aloud and in our hearts. This congregation, as they look to closing this building. Al Widelick, my father-in-law, who was hospitalized yesterday with blood clots on his lungs. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Open our hearts and minds to receive the words that you speak. Give us words to encourage the weary and to sustain one another in word and deed. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gather your saints into the new covenant that Christ has established for all creation. When we fall into sin, continually renew us until Christ dwells with us again in fullness. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy is great. Attend to the needs of the whole world with your saving grace and lead us all into new life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated.
Mary. Generous God, you feed us with the harvest of the land, and you provide for our every need. Receive our gifts of money, imagination, and labor, and transform them into a feast that welcomes all. In Jesus Christ, our host and our guest. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you created all things, and in him you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and lot and was shown forth as your Son born of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. It is he, our Lord Jesus, who fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. It is he who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant and show forth the resurrection. Taking bread and giving thanks, he said to you, this is my body, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we lift this cup and this bread before you, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as a priestly people. And we ask you, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of your church Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with the Holy Spirit to establish our faith and truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Remembering the prayer our Lord taught us to pray, we pray, our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
bless you this day and every day of your life. This is the body of Christ broken for you. May Jesus bless you this day and every day of your life. If you want to break it and give him some, go ahead. This is the body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you because Jesus loves you. The body of Christ broken for 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 you. Know that the last few months and the next few weeks are going to be difficult for you. What I want you to remember is that Jesus is with you through that journey, loving you, caring for you, directing us as a congregation, and promising you life eternal. Depart in peace. I told the last group, the last few months and the next few weeks and months are going to be hard. They're going to be painful. They have been. But I want you to know that through that time, Jesus will be with you as surely as he's with you in this bread and wine to comfort you, to strengthen you, to encourage you to continue to be his children. Depart in peace.
please rise. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have just now received, strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto eternal life. Amen. Let's share together the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Tender and merciful one, at your feast you fed who brought nothing, turning our emptiness into joy. Filled with your abundant grace, send us now to be ministers of reconciliation, mending broken hearts, working for justice, and striving for peace among all people. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
our congregation meeting will consume after the service. Please go to the lounge. You can take your palms too if you want. <laughs>